All right, this is Rob with another uh, do-it-yourself home video here. Lately, I've been having trouble with my, my furnace. Uh, the pressure has been going up way too high on this gauge right over here. It's been uh, burying the whole gauge. So what I did was um, I checked all the the check valves on all the radiators and they seem to be okay um, none of them are clogged up or anything like that there's nothing in any of them so where I'm at now is uh, this device here this is called a pigtail and this is a pressure cutoff switch so what happens um, if you have hard water these pigtails, they, they clog, they tend to clog up right through here. So I'm going to take this, this unit apart. Um, I already tested the, the switch right here. This, uh, I'll give you a better view of that switch. That switch right there, um, the brown part. What you do is take those two leads off and you check the ohms. Do an ohms test on it. To make sure that your uh, ohm meter is zero if it's other than zero then obviously that switch is bad so but I did that ohms test already and that switch seems to be okay so what I'm going to do is take these two leads off and we're going to take this unit right off the pipe and we're going to fish solder through uh, the pigtail to make sure that we have a clear path. Because if this switch doesn't trip, then obviously you're going to have a you know, pressure build up in your furnace. So we're going to do that right now. I'll show you exactly how to take this this box off. All right, so I got the leads unhooked. I'm put these. We'll pull these through. Put them aside. So that one goes over here on the right, and this one goes on the left. All right, so we got that unhooked. So now I'll take a small pipe wrench. And we'll take this uh, this whole box, this whole pressure uh, switch box right off. Turn the wrench around the other way because it seems to be slipping a little bit here. So I'll take this whole unit right off. Not very hard to get off fairly simple. So we'll just twist the whole thing right off. Usually these problems always rear themselves right when winter comes or right when the cold weather sets in and never fails for me. But yeah, that's when I found out mine was having a problem and you cannot have this gauge over here constantly burying itself on the highest pressure because over time It'll more than likely uh, weaken your boiler. You'll get a crack in the boiler, and guess what? You'll be buying a new furnace. So anyway, this is the pigtail right here. So what we would do is stick a solder, a piece of solder wire, down inside there and push it straight through. And hopefully uh, we can break through the gunk that may be in there. So I'm going to do that with this piece of solder. like that. It's a regular piece of solder that you would use to uh, do electrical work with. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push this right through the pipe here. See if we can make a nice shot up around. So as you can see it goes right in. But I, I do seem to be getting caught there. 
a little bit. So let me see if I could uh, remedy that. Because you want to be able to get it all the way through. I could be getting caught because maybe the gunk is just that built up in here. Yeah, it's getting something. There's definitely something in here because it's preventing me from uh, pushing it all the way through, but I'm trying to get it in there. Now, in a worst case scenario, if this uh, pigtail is too clogged up and you simply just can't get it in there, push the solder all the way through, then you can replace this pigtail. But generally, you don't have to, from what I understand. Yeah, there is definitely gunk in there. There's a little bit on on the solder right there. So let's see if we can get this a little bit further. Let's see if we can get this cleared up. So it seems to be going a little further now. And I think I uh, definitely found the problem here, which I will post an updated video for after the pressure in my mm -hmm. furnace comes back up again. Yeah, there's a lot of gunk built up on that. So I'm thinking that we might have found the problem here. So I'm gonna see if I can get another piece of uh, clean solder and start fishing it through the rest of the way because I think this is blocked up pretty good. So here we go. Cleaner piece of solder. It might help if you get a thicker, thicker solder than the one I'm using because it seems to me like this one is having a, it's just bending too easily. I think this is the problem though because um, I seem to be getting a little further every time I, uh, try to shove it in there a little bit more. It seems to break free just a little bit, but it's still giving me some issues though. One thing you want to be careful is don't break your solder off inside the pipe, because that probably will not be a good thing. All right, so. Try this one more time. Now, like I said, if worse comes to worse, you can replace this pigtail. It's not much money. Or you can take the pigtail right out and clean it more thoroughly than what I'm doing right here. Hopefully this does the trick, though. So I'm going to try it one more time here. And also, too, make sure you're flushing if you have a furnace, I mean, if, if this is the type of furnace you have that has the glass, the glass over here, the glass gauge, you'll see that it gets very, very brown in there. Make sure you're flushing your, your heater a lot if you do have hard water because that's obviously not good for the heater. So you wanna make sure that's pretty clear. What I'm gonna do is double up this See if I can double up this solder a little bit. Maybe I'll be able to get a better, better leverage with it so it doesn't bend as I'm pushing it through. There we go. Yeah, see, I'm definitely hitting something in here. I may end up having to replace this pigtail in here because it's definitely hitting a, a snag here. So I think I might have a, a clog that pigtail, no doubt. But we are going to try that. I'll let you know how it goes, of course. I'm going to try it and see if uh, this will indeed do the trick. Mm 
All right. This will be the last one. I'll do this, and then we'll fire up the furnace and see what let's see what it does. See what happens is um, when you get one of these uh, switches failing or the pigtail blocking itself up, as the pressure will get so high in the uh, boiler that you will no longer hear any of the hissing from your radiators upstairs because the pressure will be too great and it will close up all those valves. So you don't want that because then the heater has to work a lot harder um, to uh, push the heat up because it's creating, uh, creating a tremendous amount of pressure and it's not letting the water go up into the radiators like it should. So there's your switch and um, there's where it goes back on right there. So and that, that switch does appear to be okay. besides the test that I did. So we'll put this back on and we'll see if this was indeed the problem. If, um, and more than likely this is the problem, but what I'm going to do afterwards is, uh, once, um, once I determine if this is the problem, and more than likely it's going to be the problem, um, I'm probably going to replace this pigtail anyway because I did find that there was a lot of resistance uh, pushing the uh, solder through there so I didn't like that too much it didn't it didn't feel right something just did not feel right with that so I'm definitely going to look at replacing that pigtail anyway as I said before it's not much money to replace them a few dollars maybe you know, so that won't be a big, uh, big deal. And make sure you put your leads back on. Make sure you put your leads back on. Um, I'm not really sure if these are supposed to be in the same spots. If it's imperative that they are in the same spots, I'm not sure about that part. But I look at it this way. I was a mechanic, an auto mechanic for a long time. So what I do is I put... I put stuff back together the way I took it apart. That's the way I do it. And that's the way you should do it. Put it back together the way you took it apart. You can't go wrong. And if you end up with extra parts, you did something wrong. Right? So with that, we have this all hooked up. Just gotta tighten this up a little bit. That's good. Put your little cover back on. There you go. Alright, so as I said, um, I'm going to fire this up. And I will do a follow-up video on this because I want to make sure that that was indeed the problem. So I can let you all know in case you have the same issue here. Sometimes the simplest things are the hardest things. Can't get that screw back in there. That's something, huh? A simple thing like that. Can't get the screw back in. It would also help if I could see what I'm doing, too. Here's the screw is defeating me here. Okay, well, you get the point, though. So, I'll fiddle around with that screw in a little bit. But anyway, again, this is Rob uh, with another do-it-yourself -do home video uh, showing you how to uh, clean out the pigtail and check the uh, pressure cutoff switch on, on your furnace, on your water boiler. And, uh, again... You know, if your gauge here is going past 15, more than likely you have an issue going on. 
most most likely it would be this or you have uh, clogged uh, relief valves on your radiators upstairs that can also cause the same thing so just make sure you check those as well to make sure you know take them off and shake them and make sure they're not all gunked up on the inside so anyway signing off for now and I'll do a, a follow-up on this video